टूडे वील टॉक अबाउट द चैप्टर नंबर टू इट्स अबाउट एनर्जी एंड इन्वायरमेंट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू शुड नो दैट द फॉसल फ्यूल्स इन दिस फॉसल फ्यूल्स इफ यू सी द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द फॉसल फ्यूल्स इट मीन्स दैट द फॉस फ्यूल्स विच आर प्रोड्यूस बाय द फॉसल ऑफ डेड लिविंग थिंग्स एंड ऑर्गेनिजम so if you going to define the fossil fuels it mean the fuel which is produced from fossils and what are the fossils they are remains of dead animals and plants so these are known as fossil and the fuel which is produced by the fossils of these animals so that's known as fossil fuels now we'll see that the fossil fuel what are they coal and oil and natural gas now if you go in further uh, details so coal is formed from the plants when the dead plants they are buried under the ground for a uh, millions of years then it will they will convert into coal but when you talk about oil and natural gas so they are formed from animals or organisms in this the other animals can also be there animals and also the sea creatures the animals or organism which are living in the sea both are responsible for the formation of natural gas and oil now we'll see the formation of fossil uh, coal for example how the coal is formed now if you see the diagram you can see that the swam 3 300 minutes ago so these are the plants there and then they are dead now and then above them you have the rock and dirt and they went under the ground and due to heat and pressure the turn the plants into coal so this is how they convert into the coal once again you have the trees and what is the time 300 millions years ago when they died they are buried here and due to the high pressure and the heat they turned into coal so this is how the coal is formed if you see the further so they are saying that the huge forests grow millions of years ago covering most of the earth the vegetation died and formed peat peat is just like when uh, it the uh, plants are died and they mix with the soil so it is same like that so peat is composed of what is the peat peat is composed between the layers of sediment of form that low grade coal so peat is when the layers they are compressed and they form the low grade coal further compression form the coal so peat is just like a uh, immature you can say in when the coal is not converted 100% into coal when the plants they are not converted 100% into coal so that form is known as peat but if they will continue under compression so they will convert into the real coal so this is how the coal is formed formation of oil and natural gas whenever you will find the oil so natural gas always there maximum most of the time you will find both together how they are formed they are saying 3 to 400 million years ago the sea creature you can see they died and then they went under the sand and the silt and today when we are doing due to the high pressure and temperature so you will find that they convert into oil and gas so as if you want to say like a summary so coal is formed from dead plants and oil and natural gas they are formed from sea creatures or animals fossils so this is the main difference and how it happened millions of years ago so here detail is there small animals and plants die and fall into the bottom of the sea their remains are covered by sediments 
as the sediments start forming layers, they start to change into sandstone as the temperature and pressure increases. The heat and pressure turn the remains into crude oil and natural gas. They separate and rise through the sandstone filling in the pores. The rock above the oil natural gas is impressive, mean non-porous, means they cannot come up. So they get trapped under. So they're saying the gas can become out, but where you find the oil, they are covered in such under such rocks. So these rocks doesn't have any pores or holes, so the oil can come up. So this is the how the oil and natural gas is formed. Now you have energy resources and generation of electricity. Now we'll talk about here, what are the energy resources and how we are getting, the, we can generate the electricity from them. So why we need the, so much energy? The demand for energy is increasing worldwide due to what? Increasing in population. As the population increasing, the energy demand is also increasing. More people, more houses, more appliances. So they need the more electricity increasing industrialization and urbanization. When you have the more industries, when your country or a specific country has more industries, so of course they need electricity for that. So due to this reason, the demand of electricity increasing. Urbanization means when you are going to build new cities and your cities are developing, so you need electricity more. Improvements in standard of living and expectation. And people are also improving their standard. For example, if you can notice, especially in your country, maybe before the only few people are using the um, ACs. But now most of the people they're using ACs because they have the money, their stand, living standard increased and a lot of things they are buying which consume electricity. Now, if you want to convert the energy, you can convert in them into two main resources. Number one is non-renewable and other one is renewable. In the same like in your, you are doing in physics and chemistry. So what, what, what do you mean by non-renewable? Non-renewable means that the source of energy which cannot use again and again. So once you use them, you cannot use them again. Renewable means you can use them again and again. So now we will see the comparison between both of them. For example, what is the first point here? Non-renewable resources, they are limited. Yes, they have in a reserve form. And once you, want, you start using them, one time will come, they will finish. They are limited. But renewable can be used over and over again, like you have air, like you have waves, like you have sunlight, you can use them again and again. Now, take millions of years to get replenished, means if you want to produce them, if you want to produce them, it takes millions of years. For example, we just talk about coal, we talk about oil and we talk about natural gas. So they took millions ago, million years to form, but can be replenished in a short period of time. Means you can easily replace them. You can easily get them back very quickly. For example, today's sun, you are using sunlight after the night again, sun will be available. If you have a wind, after some time, again, wind will be available. So like this, you can use them in a short time or they can be replaced in a short time. Fossil fuels, coal or natural gas, these are the examples. Now they are giving the examples. Fossil fuels mean coal, oil and natural gas. Nuclear power, which are nuclear power mean we're using uranium. So these are the example. If you talk about the examples of the renewable, you have geothermal energy, hydroelectric energy, tidal power, wave power, wind power, solar power, biofuels, bioethanol, biogas, and wood. All these are renewable resources. We will see their details also.
Okay. Now, how energy sources are used to get to or to generate electricity? How you will use them? Whenever you're talking about electricity production, so electricity, electricity production always use the method electromagnetic induction. In physics, you already studied them. What is electromagnetic induction? You are taking magnets. For example, this is the North Pole. This is the South Pole. And you will take a coil between them. And when you move this coil up and down, so what you will, if you will put a voltmeter here, so you can see how electricity is produced. So you have to move the coil or a conductor between the magnetic field. When you are cutting the magnetic field lines, so then electricity produced. This process is known as electromagnetic induction. So whenever you have the electricity production, so you are using this method except solar. In solar, they have solar cells, not this mechanism. So for that, we, you need different parts. And we'll study about those parts, which are the parts required to produce electricity by electromagnetic induction. Number one, the turbine. We will use this word again and again. Turbine means a machine often containing fins like this. You can see here that is made to revolve by gas. You can move it by gas. You can move it steam. You can move it by air. And then you will connect this side with a generator. So that is known as the turbine. And we will see how it is used. Same in physics, you are doing this one. Now, see here. This is the steam turbine. Okay. In the steam turbine, you can see here, this is the turbine. And this is like a one, they took in large one. They took one piece from here and make it in large. This is a steam turbine. When the steam falls on this one, it rotates. When it rotates, it is fitted with the generator. And gen in generator, magnet or the coil moves and exit is produced. We'll see in further detail also. See here. This is a generator. This is the basic principle of the generator. You have, this is the coil. These are the magnets, magnetic pole, north pole, south pole. And this is the slip rings. In motor, you have split rings. But here you have slip rings. So when this coil rotate and it cut electromagnetic field lines, so there is a change in the flux and electricity is produced. In the environmental, they will not ask this detail, but I'm explaining because you are a physics student. So I'm explaining this one. So in the same thing happening here, you can see it is a... Sir? Yes? Can you repeat the last point again? This one? Now, this one is a magnet. You know that. This is the North Pole. This is the South Pole. And the magnetic field lines always move from north to south. You know this thing. So in between, you here you have a strong magnetic field. And here you have a coil. This coil you can see. Coil means it's a lot of wires that turn and they make a coil. When you rotate this coil, so this coil will cut the magnetic field lines. So when magnetic field lines are cut, so there will be a change in magnetic field. For example, here I will draw, this is north, this is south. I will draw the coil. Okay. Now this coil, it is, for example, let's say 50 magnetic, meet, magnetic lines are going to north to south. And from 50, Let's say it is stopping only 10. So how many left? 40. So 40 magnetic field lines are going this way. When you rotate it, maybe it will cut more. Maybe it will cut 30. 
So now only 20 left. So here 40, here 20. So there is a change in magnetic field lines. So this change in magnetic field lines produce the current. So this is the main idea in physics when you're using this one. So this is the magnetic field line. They are changing the magnetic flux. So this is produced electricity. And because it is moving in both directions up and down, so you are producing alternating current. But in uh, environmental, they will not ask about this all detail. But I want to explain to you this one. Here, the same thing. For example, now anything, this is the turbine. You can move this turbine with water. You fall the water on this one, it starts to rotate. You can move this turbine with the help of wind. Wind comes and start to rotate. You move it with the help of steam. High pressure steam fall on this turbine and start to rotate. When it rotate, it fitted with the generator. Generator means the coil of the generator. And the coil start to move between the magnetic field. So they produce electricity. This is the windmill. Wind comes here and rotates the blades. These blades fitted with the turbine and turbine fitted with the generator. And when the generator coil moves, electricity is produced. Same thing here, one other diagram. This is the rotator or the turbine. You can fall on this one, mean you can rotate it. And when it rotates, you have the generator. And generator produce electricity, electricity goes. Now fossil fuels and biofuels. Now you will compare the fossil fuels with the biofuels. Fossil fuels, you know that they are produced from the fossils of dead plants and animals. But if you talk about the biofuels, they are produced from the living things. For example, they can be like uh, fruits, they can be like uh, vegetable, and they can be the waste from the animals. So they, these are their main, if they talk about fossil fuel, they talk about coal, they mean gasoline, the oil, the diesel fuel, natural gas. So they are known as fossil fuels. If you talk about here, so alcohols, ethanols, vegetable oil, biogas. Now we will compare both of them, how they're different from each other. See now, this is the comparison between them. Now, if you see the type, biofuels, they are renewable. Fossil fuels, they are non-renewable. Source from where you are getting the biofuels, modern plants and recently produce organic waste. And from where they are produced, the organisms died million years ago. Impact on health. So these biofuels, they are non-toxic. They are not producing any bad impact on your health. And if you see, they are usually toxic ingredients and byproducts. Sometimes they are itself, they are dangerous, and but sometimes they produce something that is also dangerous for your health. State of industry mean the industry of biofuel, it is growing now. If you see the you saw a lot of cars are coming in the market which work on biofuels and even the electricity, the like Tesla, they are working on electricity. So now the all the uh, world is transforming their energy from non-renewable to renewable if they are using fossil fuels before now they are shifting from fossil fuel to renewable like hydroelectric like solar like uh, the you can say tide geothermal all on these one so here the industry for them it is declining so this is the main comparison between them in term of type source impact on health and impact of the industry Nuclear power. What is happening in the nuclear power station? In nuclear power, you know that fossil, then uranium is used. Uranium is a radioactive element. You know the radioactive elements, the elements which release the radiation. 
so they are known as radioactive element when they do in the reactor atomic reactor when they do the nuclear fission of the uranium when they break down the uranium when they break down the nucleus of the uranium a large amount of heat is released that amount of heat they use to heat the water once again when they break the nucleus so heat comes out that heat they use to heat water and that water will convert into steam and then that steam with a high pressure it fall on a turbine and when this turbine moves it is already fitted with the generator and when generator coil rotates electricity is produced so this is how a nuclear power station works once again in nuclear power station what is the fuel uranium and one they will what they will do they will do nuclear fusion nuclear fusion you know that breaking down a large nucleus into small nuclei so when they break it down a large amount of heat is released that large amount of heat is used to heat water and when water is heated it's become steam when it's become steam then it is move the turbine because steam come with a high pressure like in the pressure cooker when you are cooking at in the kitchen so when it come with a high pressure it rotates the turbine turbine fitted with a generator and produce the electricity so this is how it works geothermal energy geothermal energy if you see the name geo mean earth thermal mean heat it mean heat is coming from the earth in some areas in the world if you see there down there are hot rocks this is the surface our surface and here down you have hot rocks and these hot rocks what they will do for example here you have a hot rock temperature is really high so they will make a hole with a pipe and they will put the water inside it and here they will make another pipe from that water which coming down it convert into steam due to the heat and it will come up in the form of steam in from one pipe water is going down and from other pipe steam is coming up when the steam is coming coming up again it fall on a turbine turbine start moving and turbine fit with a generator and produce electricity so this is how geothermal energy works you can see here that this is the area where under the ground you can find the hot rocks down here and these hot rocks water is going down and come back in the form of steam and that steam is used to move the turbine and generator to produce electricity so this is the geothermal you can see here once again from here this is the water is coming down and hot rocks convert into steam hot water steam is going up here and the here it move the turbine turbine fit with the generator and produce electricity and the steam again when it's cooled down again it goes down and again convert into steam so like a cycle so this is the process which is used in a geothermal place where electricity is produced by using the heat under the ground now you have a wind power wind power again <clears throat> the wind mills are the wind turbine these are the wind turbines they are fitted in a area where all the time or most of the time you have the strong winds when the wind falls on these blades or the wings so they start to rotate when they start to rotate in this area they have the generator and turbine and they start to produce electricity like we discussed before so this is the wind power you can see here this is the wind wind rotate these blades these blades has a gear box and mean and the gear box fitted with a generator and generator produce electricity and that electricity is moved to the different parts of the world or your city or country 
you have solar panel the solar panel you have these solar panels these ones so these solar panels they are made by semiconducting material semiconductor it means silicon like germanium so they have the photo cells inside them what is a photo cell photovoltaic cell this photo cell has a property to convert sunlight into electricity so like this the solar uh, panels are used so they are known as solar cell solar panels they convert the solar energy into current you can see here this is the you have sun this is the solar panels and here electricity produced and going this one so whatever is doing electron flows all this one is not required by your syllabus but being a science student i am just telling you this diagram tidal power tidal power if you see the name tidal power means that tides tides mean the waves they are coming in the sea and when they are doing these they are using these high tides to produce electricity how it happened like this i think you have may observe this one if you went to the sea maybe you observe that one in the day the sea if you on the sea shore you find the sea went back the you will not find water here you feel that the sea level is very decreasing and sea went back but as in the evening the water start to come back on the shore again and in the night that waves or tides are really high and when the tides are really high so they make a system like this these water waves they come over this one and water come and store this one here so here you can see water is stored when the water level is high at night <coughs> oh my god that oh my man then fulla you are eating something from the baby okay sorry for this one okay so it mean that you the water waves in the night they are really high and water level is really high water is come and stored here in the day water goes back water level come till here and here you have the store the water so in the day what you will do you will release the water from here and that water how you release by this thing you this gate you will move it up in the night they are closed only water can come here water cannot go this side but in the day when you open the gate water start to flow back towards the sea and in between you fit the turbine this turbine has generator when the water moves it moves the turbine blades and when they move electricity is produced with the help of generator so this is the tidal power stations so you can see here in this diagram here they store the water at night high level and now they water releasing so this is a turbine water going back to the sea because tides are low now in the sea and now this turbine moves and produce the electricity same thing here the from high level it's going again to the ocean and here you have turbine when the water move through the turbine it rotates and rotates the generator produce electricity wave power in the wave when the waves moving up and down they also have turbine and generator by this way because when the wave move up and down so they have a special Uh, operators they design in such a way when they move up and they move down so they have a system that turbine moves and electricity produce that is the wave energy like this these are the machines they put in the sea and the sea waves when move up and down these machine also move up and down 
they have a system due to the movement up and down they rotate the turbine and produce electricity you can see here this is also known as a floating convert type of the converter you can see here when it is moving up and down floating this one so it due to movement up and down so it producing the electricity so these details i just added you it's not like a part of your syllabus you have to know that much of detail but being a science student i'm just added this one if you read this one it will improve your comprehension here sometimes this type of this one things are used there are different type of instruments used by different countries and they have the same the idea they will convert the movement of the waves into electricity hydroelectric hydroelectric it is more common so for that they make the dam you can see this is the dam and in the dam water comes from mountains due to the rain okay or due to the snow due to the rain water comes here and they store the water here when they store the water here then they release the water when the water falls down with a high speed it has a great kinetic energy and here they put the turbine and that turbine is rotated by the water which is coming with a high speed from a height and by this way this turbine is fitted with a generator generator rotate and produce electricity so this is known as hydroelectric and you are making the dams dam mean this is a dam you can see and it is not suitable to make dam everywhere only few countries and in even the country few areas where you have the mountain and all this where you have the rain they are suitable to produce the or to make the dam you can see here this is like a animating picture this is the dam and here water is at a high level then they throw the water from a high level with the help of pipe down when the water moves down it has a high kinetic energy and this kinetic energy moves the turbine and the turbine moves it is fitted with a generator and generator coil moves and produce electricity and is going to the different parts of the country and the city so this is the how the hydroelectric energy is produced now advantages and disadvantages of different fuels so first of all we will see the what are the advantages and disadvantages of fossil fuels advantages all the time available means for example it's not the uh, you can say waiting for sun will be there then you produce electricity or there will be wind you produce electricity or if it is a rain you produce electricity in this you have no if you have a oil you can use at any time you have a gas you can use any time if you have a coal you can use it any time so these are the advantages provide job opportunities because if it is a coal gas or oil they need mining and processing the technology is used is well known and the method of extraction are well practiced and other thing that when they are using these fossil fuels so the they are using it from more than centuries so then they know how to use it but what are the disadvantages carbon dioxide and toxic gases are released damage the local area non renewable so these are disadvantages of fossil fuels now you see the biofuels biofuels i told you they are made by the plants but not like million years ago now they are for example they have the sugar cane they convert into alcohol and they convert alcohol they mix with some oil and they make biofuel and sometime the waste from animals they convert into gas so what are the advantages they are renewable so the main advantage and disadvantage of all the fossils and the biofuels that is fossil fuels are non renewable biofuels are renewable growing more plant use carbon dioxide so when you need it you are growing more plants and the carbon dioxide is you can 
use the carbon dioxide which is already in the atmosphere. You can reduce the amount of carbon dioxide. Disadvantages. Carbon dioxide and toxic gases are released when burned. Lots of land needed. If you want to do biofuel, you need a lot of land for this. Shortage of land for agriculture. It can increase the food prices. Removal of natural ecosystem. It can reduce the biodiversity. So these are advantages and disadvantages of biofuels and the fossil fuels. Nuclear power station. So what are the disadvantages? What are the advantages? Do not produce carbon dioxide. Yes. A large amount of energy is produced with a small amount of the fuel. Provide job opportunities. Disadvantages. Risk of radiation. Recently, Russia, when it attacked the Ukraine, so there is a nuclear power station. It is damaged. So if it is damaged badly, so it can kill 100,000 of people. Radioactive waste cannot be recycled non-renewable. So these are the advantage, disadvantage of nuclear power in which you are using uranium as a fuel in a nuclear power station where water is heated with the help of nuclear fuel and convert into steam and steam is used to produce electricity. So this is nuclear power advantage, disadvantages. Now we discuss about the geothermal power. As we said, that geothermal power in which the hot rocks under the ground, they are used to heat the water. Water come back in the form of a steam and it is used to move the turbine and produce electricity. What are the advantages? Does not produce carbon dioxide, does not contribute to global warming. And other one is renewable. Disadvantages, expensive to install. The machines, they are used to get the energy from geothermal, they are really expensive. And only certain areas are suitable. Where you have the hot rocks down, then you can use it. You cannot use every place. So these are the disadvantages for the geothermal energy. Then you have wind power. In wind power, you have advantages does not produce carbon dioxide, does not contribute to global warming, all the renewable resources. So they are the environment friendly. They will not produce the uh, toxic gases. Renewable, very low cost once built. If you built it once, after that, you will get almost free. Only you have to maintain the machines. Disadvantages. Generation of electricity depend on the weather. If there is a wind, then you can put electricity. If there is no wind, you cannot produce electricity. Only certain locations are suitable. You can install this wind turbines only areas where all the time or most of the time you have the winds. Visual impact. So when you put a lot of windmills in some area, so they are doesn't look good. They produce noise also and it doesn't look the good. They destroy the natural beauty. Large areas, they need large areas. It means they take the lot of land. After you have solar power. In solar power, you, we discussed that you are using solar panels, which converts the solar light or sunlight into current. Advantages, do not produce carbon dioxide, do, does not contribute to global warming. Costly to build. Sorry, again, I think it's left here. It is disadvantage, not advantage. Okay, so this is disadvantages. I have to make it this one. And what is the, you can say disadvantages, Number one, costly to build. Okay, so they are costly to build and also depend on weather. If there is sunlight, you can produce electricity. If there is no, you cannot. 
After that, you have tidal power. So tidal power, they said that does not produce carbon dioxide. Good. Tidal movements are not weather dependent. Most of the weekends always in the sea, you have the tide, tides. Disadvantages. Limited to coastal areas. It means that where you have the sea, you can produce electricity. If you don't have an ocean or sea in that area, you cannot. Impact on the tourism and local fish, fishermen. So whenever you're producing the electricity by this way, so you cannot allow the fishermen and the tourists to go on that area because it can be dangerous. So these are the advantages and disadvantages of that one. After that, you have the wave power. Again, the wave does not produce carbon dioxide, renewable, disadvantage, limited specific areas, not very efficient at present. Hydroelectric, in which you are making the dam. Advantages, again, renewable, do not produce carbon dioxide, water can be re reused. Disadvantages, dams impact on the natural flow of the water because they have to stop the water. It is it can affect the villages and ecosystems. And you can also write expensive to build. They are also expensive to build. If you want to write here, you can write. Build. You can also write only some areas are suitable. So you can also write these things. These are the key terms. When you go through them, inshallah, you can find the energy demand. Why the energy demand is there? So there are different needs of energy. You can say one is domestic at home while you're using energy. You are using energy for a lot of things, for cooking, for electricity, for all these purposes. And then you are doing this one. So that is the at domestic at you are using this one. After that in industry, industry, you are using machines and all these things. So you need, you can say energy there also. So the main points, fruits and vegetable, that aren't naturally available in the season. So you are doing the greenhouse and you are making them. So this is also domestic. Whenever you have the domestic means at home you are using. Industry means in the industry you are using. And also for transport. Energy also need for transport. Mean the fossil fuel you're using for in cars, in public buses, in train, in aeroplane, you're using all over the way. So energy is also used here. Economic factors, personal and national wealth. Now it also depends how much energy you are using. It depends on your personal wealth or the national wealth. As we discussed before that, if you're, you are a rich person, so your energy demand will be more because you have a lot of machines at home. You have AC, you have water heater, you have water pump, you have microwave oven, you have washing machine, you have TV, you have computer. So you, if you are a rich person and you are have luxury items at home, so you will need more energy. But if you don't have all these things and you are an average person, you don't have all these machines, so your energy need is less. In the same way, if a country is really rich, country is really developed, so it needs more energy as compared to a country who is underdeveloping or that non-developing countries, so they have. So it means that the poor economic conditions and good economic conditions also decide that how much energy is needed for a person or for a country. Decline the economy of one country can have a global impact. Now, sometime energy demand increasing or decreasing. As we discussed that when Corona came in China, so China is a big supplier of a lot of things in all over the world. And when Due to the corona, everything is closed in China. The factories are closed. Everything is closed in China. That energy demand is also decreased. And the, when the China did not produce 
those items electricity items and, and didn't uh, export to the other countries so other countries also have less you can say energy use you saw that when there was a corona all the flights were cancelled or on that road traffic become really less so at that time maybe you observed that the lot of countries they did not use the oil they are using before lot of countries they did not use the petrol and all these things using before and that was a uh, really good for the global warming the no much global warming was produced at that time so there are different things so whenever sometime a con one country uh, its uh, decline economy can affect the global impact climate the demand for energy with regard with the climate of the country for example in saudi arabia i told you that they here they need the air condition it is really important without acs you cannot live it is really difficult to survive so if your country is really hot and you want to spend a luxurious life so you have to use the acs and other cooling items and in that case you need more energy and if your country is really cold so then you need gas you need electric heaters also you need more energy if your country is in such a have a such a climate not cold not hot just like a average climate so maybe you don't need acs for example if you go to in saudi arabia if you go to abha region so you will not find the people are using acs only few maybe they are using because due to the climate so the climate also decide that how much energy a country required so this is another thing if you go in detail you can understand this one we assess with as a question try to solve them and then later on we can see this one the conservation and management of energy resources they're saying how you can conserve how you can save the energy resources and how you can manage the energy resources got it so how you can save them so here you have different strat uh, strategies for effective energy use number one reduce consumption so you should reduce the consumption and there are different methods for the uh, you can say uh, reducing the consumption you can design your house in a such a way that they need less heat and less uh, you can say acs and all these things different technologies like insulation can be used if you are living in a country in which it is really cold and you need you can say the heat or heater so you can use insulation so insulation has a material which is which does not allow the heat to pass through so once you make your house hot the heat will not go out this is the loft insulation mean at the ceiling you have this one you can see here this different type so in cold countries like european countries or the country where you have the snow falling so they are doing this one because if they will not use this one so they have to turn on the heater 24 hours but if you have insulation this one you will make your house warm for once and you can stay after switching off the heater maybe 4 5 hours after that you have under floor insulation you can do under the floor insulation like this mostly it is made when your house is made of wood here also this one so under the floor and then so it will not allow the heat to go out and also it will not allow the heat to come in from outside the cavity wall between the wall they make a cavity and they put a insulating material in between and this insulating material will not allow the heat to go in or go out you can see here sometime double glazing glass is used this glass normally windows have one glass but double glazing has two glasses in between they have the air space here so they will not also allow the heat to pass through them sometimes they're using triple glass like this three glasses and there's more effective 
than the double. So they will also stop the heat transfer in and out from the home. So by this way, you can save the lot of energy. You can see here, they make the comparison between double glass and triple glass outside. They put the thermal detector outside the house. Here you can see the hot areas mean heat is coming out from here. And this is double glass. And this is triple glass and triple glazing. So it will less heat is coming out. You cannot see only here some areas you can see. So it will stop though triple glazing is better than the sing double one. Energy from waste, you can produce the energy from the waste also. For that you have apparatus that's known as an aerobic digestion. What is that? It's breaking down of organic matter. What is organic matter? Waste, food and vegetation you, by using bacteria. So that's known as aerobic digestion. So this is in a lot of countries like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, they are producing the, this thing, producing the biogas by using the animal waste, the food waste and the vegetable waste. You can see here. Animal waste come here. The waste water bodies come here. Biosolids come here. Waste food come here. Other organic food come here. So this is an aerobic digestion. So what they will do, it produce, okay? It will break down. It will break down them into smaller pieces. And that smaller pieces go down to digest it and then what it will do from here, it is the waste comes and here the gas comes. Gas is used to produce electricity, to heat the houses, to run the vehicles and also to renewable gas. And this waste, it is used as an organic fertilizer. It is used for animals like a bed on the ground. It is used to other products. It is used for crop irrigation like this. So these are the and aerobic digester. Advantages of this one, waste from burning ash is small in volume. This does not take up much space. Disadvantages, produce poisonous gases during the combustion. The food processing industries use large quantities of cooking oil and vegetable oil once used need to be disposed of. These oils can be collected and recycled into biofuel suitable in vehicles. It can be use excessively or additively. So here the advantage and disadvantages for them if you're using the biofuels. Education, they're saying that even you want to save energy, you want to conserve energy. So you have to educate your people. Then you can save energy. If your people are not educated, so you cannot save energy. If they don't have the sense of responsibility, if they don't have the thinking power, that these things can be good for us or not. And also they will not think for about the future generation. So then they cannot save the energy. And, and they also, you can tell them that the energy bills uh, will be less if you will save the energy. So the government should pass some laws or change some laws so they can encourage the people who are saving the energy after that, some government incentives to encourage the purchase of more efficient technology. Before you're using the bulb, now you have energy savers are LEDs. So if the, the government or a country want that, they will buy the new technology like LEDs and these LEDs, they are taking very less electricity. So they have to reduce their prices. So they should make them more cheap. So the people should buy them as compared to the other one so they can save the energy. Exploiting existing energy resources. If anyone using the energy and is wasting energy, for example, there's no one at home, all the lights are on, all the ACs are on like this. So the government should make some laws. They should make some rules that they should discourage the people. Like in Saudi Arabia, the people are not using the electricity much, but this new government, what they did, the new, this uh, moment when the, this came, 
new policies they said they increase the rate of electricity now the person who are using electricity for 200 riyals now it can pay maybe 400 riyals but this is a good because now people they are not wasting the energy they are switching off the light when they do not using it it's a good you can say at uh, policy by the government transport policies so they should also make the transport policies what is the transport policy instead of using the individual cars they should use the public transport and they also use the trains they should use the buses so if the 50 people they are use their 50 cars alone it's better they will go in one bus so it will save lot of energy also it will reduce lot of pollution so the government should make this kind of policies after that the government should develop new resources they should find the new resources of the energy they should found the new uh, reserve of energy new techniques to get the energy one of them is fracking fracking is a technique in which the oil and natural gas is taken out from shale rock this is a type of a rock from where oil and gas is coming out and how they are taking out that is a process and what is that process they are going to down that rock and then they use the water and sand chemicals and then they take out the oil and gas from there we will see with the help of diagram how they will do and the purpose now which three thing they are using in this process you should take here sometime is uh, it comes as a question in the exam what is that water why they using water to easy to handle in a high pressure chemicals why they use chemicals stop blockage of the pipe number 3 sand why they are using sand in this process keep the cracks in the rock open or propent we'll see them advantages allow access to more oil and gas less pollution than burning coal provide many jobs reduce need to import oil and gas need to import the it will reduce your imports disadvantage risk of toxin entering the water table chemical are toxic i will explain to you this one first this is the fracking see this one now here you have the shale rock and here they are putting bringing with the pipe what they are doing they are coming water in a high pressure they break down these rocks here with the help of sand and water pressure they are using chemical so these pipes in which water is coming down they will not block and they are using sand why because once the rock is broken down the sand will come in between the cracks and it will not allow the cracks to repair and there will be air can pass through them so that you can see here this sand will remain them open so now the gas which is coming out from these rocks it will go up so like this they are doing for fracking impact of oil pollution the oil pollution is really dangerous and it cause lot of you can say dangers to the especially the marine life also the the land life also for example main causes of the marine oil spill the offshore oil extraction sometime they are extracting the oil near the sea from there the oils come out these are the well of the oil so this is a one reason after that sometime the oil pipelines they are leak and oils come out of them this is another reason after that sometime there is a accident or there is a leakage in the oil tankers who are going in the, the ocean they produce the oil pollution so all now impacts of the of an oil spill if there is a oil spill what are the impacts of this one the first of all on which organism or habitat it will 
effect so what are the animal they are known as phytoplankton okay what is a phytoplankton and why it is important phytoplankton are microscopic marine organisms sit at the bottom of the food chain phytoplankton get their energy from carbon dioxide through the photosynthesis okay and so far very important in carbon cycle each year they transfer around 10 billion tons of carbon from atmosphere to the ocean so they are phytoplankton they are really important it's like a plants you can say in the sea so if there is a oil leak in the sea so it will disturb the phytoplankton this phytoplankton if they are disturbed so they are they, they said under in food chain they are down if they are disturbed so because they are producers in the food chain in the bottom what you have producer if they are disturbed all upper use consumers are disturbed so they are disturbed so all of them they are disturbed how they are disturbed what will happen they are saying that if there is a oil leakage so oil will cover the water layer it will not allow the sunlight to go in even the wind it will not allow to go out even oxygen cannot get in so in that case then it will can kill the phytoplankton and if the phytoplankton are killed so the whole food chain will disturb of the marine life for example fish if there is a oil leakage what will happen to the fish shortage of food reduction in phytoplankton because phytoplankton are died so fish are eating them it will also die oil floating on the surface prevent gas exchange the gases cannot come in and go out of the water that is stop fish become short of oxygen and die direct contact of the fish with oil affect their gills you can see their diet so these are the impact of the marine life uh, of oil spill on a marine life even the birds you can say birds if they stuck in this one they cannot fly maybe they cannot die if it goes to in their stomach they can die mammals also for example these mammals if they have this oil spill they also disturb reefs and these are the rocks under the ground sorry under the water so they can also damage like this beaches beaches also become dirty you can see here then no tourism nothing so they have to be cleaned manage oil pollution how you can manage the oil pollution reducing oil spills in marine environment so they have a uh, marine pollution there is the international prevention for that pollution from the ship what is that they should supervise the transport in the sea transport of oil in the sea the tankers which are transporting the oil they should be checked regularly tanker design should be in such a way it should have a double safety they should have two layers if due to any damage one side is leak other will not be leaked so this is the other if you go in this one you can find details minimizing the impact floating bombs these are the floating bombs so if they have a oil spill if you put them like this so they will stop the oil in this area detergents and the sprays if there is a oil spill so you can spray the detergent in that area so that detergent also lock the oil and then you can remove it skimmer skimmer also used to clean the uh, water of the oceans if they have oil spill these are special type and they are used for cleaning this one these are the key things